Hey, let us talk about history again. This time, about Joan of Arc, a girl who hears voices, leads an army, wins incredible military victories, and later becomes a saint. Yet, tragically, ends up being burned at a stake. This is the story of Joan of Arc, one of the most fascinating figures of the Middle Ages. But what's the real story behind her? Why is she still so famous? Well, let's take a closer look and separate the myth from reality. What do you think? Is Joan of Arc one of the most interesting historical figures for you, or are there other people you find more exciting? Let me know in the comments. Maybe I will cover them in a future video. Also, do you think every country needs its own heroic legend or myth? Let me know in the comments as well. Now, picture this: France, 1429. The doors to the royal reception hall open, and all the important figures of the court turn to see a young peasant girl walking in. Despite the grandeur of the court. She is confident as she strides across the room, and the whispers begin. She stops, looks around, and, without ever having seen him before, she picks out a dolphin, the heir to the French throne, from the crowd. She walks up to him and says, "Illustrious Lord Dolphin, I've come sent by God to bring aid to you and the kingdom of France." Of course, he would speak French and not English. And that girl is, of course, you guessed it, Joan of Arc. She is only about seventeen or eighteen at this point. And yes, this scene sounds a bit wild, doesn't it? A peasant girl claiming she is on a divine mission, standing in front of the future king of France. How did this even happen? Why does Joan believe God has sent her on this mission? And how is she supposed to help friends? Well, let's rewind a bit and look at what's going on in France at the time. By 1429, France had been at war with England for a long, long time. What we call the Hundred Years' War, though you guess it's pretty long. Even though it actually lasted even longer, 116 years, England had already taken large parts of France. Including Paris, the French armies were struggling and losing battle after battle. Orleans, an important city, had been under siege since 1428. So, France was in a pretty desperate situation, and that's when Joan of Arc enters the scene. Somehow, she convinces the Dauphin to meet with her. We don't know exactly how that conversation went down. But she must have been pretty persuasive. Whether her actual belief she was sent by God, or was just desperate for any kind of help, he listened to her. Joan wasn't just some random girl from a small village, though. She came from a well-off peasant family, and by the time she met the Dauphin, she had already been hearing voices for years. Voices. She believed were from saints and the archangel Michael. These voices told her to free France from the enemy and help the Dauphin become king. When the war finally reached the region, Joan felt a moment had arrived. Her journey to meet the Dauphin wasn't easy. She dressed in man's clothing for protection and even carried a sword. Sounds like something out of a movie, right? Well, it worked. The dolphin didn't just believe in her; he had her investigated by clerics to make sure her voices were really divine, and not, well, coming from downstairs from the devil himself. They even tested her virginity to confirm she was pure. When she passed all the tests, however, that worked. She was allowed to join to the army. And this young woman, now in armor. Went with the French army to lift the siege of Orleans. Remember, she is just seventeen or eighteen years at that point, which had been ongoing for months. The soldiers 
Aaron exactly felt about taking orders from a girl with no military experience. But John wasn't just there to inspire them with her faith. She got right into the fight and even got wounded on her first day of battle. Instead of retreating though, she kept fighting. Her bravery inspired the troops and the Aliens was finally freed. With that victory, the tide of the war began to turn. Joan led more successful campaigns and became incredibly famous. She even stood beside it often during his coronation as King Charles VII. Imagine the scene. A peasant girl from nowhere standing next to the king at one of the most important moments in French history. But Joan's success didn't last forever. She faced a few military setbacks, got wounded again, and in 1340, she was captured by Burgundian soldiers. They handed her over to the English. And that's when the troubles really began. Joan's trial was held in Rouen, and it wasn't anything but fair. Well, what do you expect at the time? It was a political trial, designed to destroy her reputation and discredit everything she had done. She was accused of hearsay, witchcraft, and, get this, wearing men's clothes, apparently a no-go for a woman. Joan defended herself bravely, even arguing with the judges. But had you, had you guessed, the verdict was inevitable. In the following year, in 1431, she was sentenced to death by burning at a stake, a horrible fate. It seemed like that it would be the tragic end of Joan's story. It wasn't. Five centuries later, in 1920, she was declared a saint by the Catholic Church. Joan of Arc, once seen as a heretic and a witch, became a symbol of faith and courage. Today, she is one of the patron saints of France, remains a national icon. The story raises a lot of questions, of course. Was she truly guided by divine voices? Or was she suffering from some kind of mental illness? I guess we will never know. But it doesn't really matter. And maybe that's even a part of why her story is so fascinating. Let me know, what do you think about her story? And if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe check out my older videos. Even my audiobooks. It helps a lot. Thank you.